So when someone is presenting to you with chest pain, what they really want to know is, is my chest pain due to a heart attack? Is it due to something that will drastically change my life if I don't do anything now? Now, chest pain is a very vague symptom. For one individual, that chest pain can be nothing. For somebody else, that chest pain can be a sign of an impending heart attack. So where do, where do we start from? We start with a good history and physical to see if you are at high risk and we need to stop what we're doing, take you to the cardiac catheterization lab and make sure that you are not having a life changing heart attack. My name is Dr. Isang and if you're finding any benefit in this, hit that subscribe button. So. What exactly is chest pain? What is chest pain that is concerning to a cardiologist? When you have chest pain here in the mid sternal region that radiates to the shoulder, um, sometimes to the jaw, and with associated laboratory data, whether that's a troponin level that's elevated, whether that's an EKG showing acute heart attack, if we see this, we definitely want to get you into the hospital as quickly as possible if you're in the outpatient setting or if you're already in the hospital in the emergency department, get you into a cardiac catheterization lab. Now there are some people who have symptoms that are not similar to what I just said. They can have what is known as atypical symptoms. We do not want to miss a potential heart attack. We do our due diligence and get still a good history look at that um, family history and see if this individual, despite not having the classical presentation, is having a cardiac event that needs further evaluation. For some individuals that, may, that might mean a cardiac catheterization, other people it might mean an echocardiogram, a stress test, or monitoring in the hospital for a few days to make sure that you are not at risk. It doesn't stop there. There are some individuals who, despite having everything negative, still need follow-up on an outpatient basis where they can have continual evaluation to look for cardiac and possibly non-cardiac causes of their chest pain. And I said there are some people who don't have those classical symptoms. So what symptoms can they have if they're not having crushing chest pain? They can have shortness of breath. They can have diaphoresis or sweating, nausea. There's been even cases where someone thought they were having the flu or panic attack when in fact they were having a heart attack. So it's important once again to always make sure that you're working up each individual based on them themselves and not looking for a specific pattern, especially in these high risk, unfortunate populations. Who are the people who are typically having these atypical presentations? Diabetics, women, sometimes people with kidney disease. So we have to do our due diligence in working these individuals up to make sure that we're not missing any potential causes. So, someone has chest pain but it's not coming from the heart, what can it be? It can be a host of a lot of different things. You can have inflammation of the chest wall cavity. This is known as costochondritis that can cause that discomfort. You can have inflammation around the heart, pericarditis, the muscle of the heart, myocarditis. You can have issues with your pancreas that can cause that discomfort, known as pancreatitis. You can have issues with your GI system, whether that's through reflux, an ulcer, or even a bleed. So if someone has a workup that is negative, we don't stop there. We want you to follow up with your primary, follow up with your physician to make sure other potential non-cardiac causes have been evaluated appropriately. My name is Dr. Issa, and if you found any benefit in this short discussion about chest pain, hit that subscribe button.